He is a player that we have patiently developed. I say we give the youngster a chance. It's a very nice start. Here we go. Jerome Meta out to it. Toto inside for holding the half space. Jerome Meta goes in. Pena. Oh no. Big gun again. Pena. It's the opening goal. Boom. Do you see how we use the rules? Ah. I just explained inside forward just now, right? You play inside forward, goes half space. Allows the wing back to naturally overlap. Da Silva. Oh, beautiful ball to To. To comes inside again. The youngster hits. Whoa. Um, that was one heck of a debut from our 19-year-old Damalto in the championship. Yes, I think it's time we revisited what these roles actually do. The inside forward, the inverted winger, the winger. If you recall in a previous video, I gave a really simple explanation on the difference between the inverted winger and inside forward. I also did a fairly lengthy post on the SI forums. The inverted winger is primarily a creator. The inside forward is primarily a goal scorer. Now on today's show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Manchester City. I'm going to try different roles out and I'm going to show you the differences in the movement and how they operate on the pitch. Then I'm also going to quote from Jack Joyce. He's the, on the Match Engine team with Sports Interactive and he has also got some pieces of information that you might find helpful. Jack recently posted this explanation. Wingers hold width throughout the attack. So if you expect the roll to stay wide throughout the build-up phase and even through to the attacking phase, then you're looking at wingers. Inverted wingers will hold width during the build-up. That's the phase when they enter midfield and they're trying to begin the attacking transition. They invert after the build-up phase. Once they be enter the final third, they will move inside and operate in the half spaces. A half space is... The space between players might be a fullback and a winger. They'll occupy that space in between players. Inside forwards hold width during build-up. They invert after the build-up phase, moving inside, looking for space. Their job is to focus on goal scoring. So inverted wingers are primarily creators and inside forwards, goal scorers. Between versions of football manager, SI is usually tweaking roles because they worry sometimes that's roles might end up playing like each other. So they're going to be always trying to make small little changes so that these roles play a bit more effectively. Now, you might be one of those guys who insists he wants to have his players stay wide and create chances from wider positions. If you want somebody to stay wide, I know the inverted winger has a play instruction, right? So you might think he's going to be forced to stay wide because of that play instruction. But you have to remember... That play instruction is a tendency to do something. It's not a guarantee that it's going to stay wide. So if you want him to stay wide, why don't you use him as a winger and play him opposite the flank of his preferred foot? So if he's got a preferred right foot and you want him to create chances wide from the left, then play him on the left flank. Because with his right foot, he's going to look inside and use that right foot to create chances by putting balls into dangerous areas. This is an approach that you can take. Now, if you want the role to stay wide, then move inside to create space for an overlapping fullback. That's the role of the inverted winger. If you wanted to find a role that best fits players like Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli and Mitoma, then the winger would probably be the best role for them. Wingers on the tank. So let's go to Manchester City. It's a decent squad. We'll probably be able to see how the rules move with this team. And we have added a couple of players so that we can try different things out. We've got Angel Correa. He can play as a great winger. As you can see, um, on either side, he'll be able to attack the ball. He likes to dribble and he likes to dribble a lot. And then um, we've got Rafael Leo. Again, another player that we, who can play as a winger on one flank. And, you know, if you play him on the flank opposite his preferred foot, yeah, there'll be some interesting things he does from there as well. Okay, so let's find out what happens. Now, we've got this 4 2 3 one. It's relatively simple. There are no PIs in this type thing, right? So we don't want to mess things up with added PIs. Then furthermore, we're playing um, Bernardo Silva here as a winger. Notice this. He's got a strong left foot. So what I can expect to see from him, cutting inside. Now, on the left flank, we're going to use Foden as a winger. Now, he has gets into opposition area. So, occasionally, he will try and get into the opposition area. It's a trait that you'll see uh, players with a decent finishing half. 
All right, but typically he's playing on the left flank. Um, he's got a strong left foot. So we're going to see him hug the line. Okay, so the tactic, shorter passing, fairly wide, lower tempo, work ball into box, counter press. There's no counter. It's just a bog basic control possession preset. So here we go. This is a build-up phase. Ruben gets the ball, plays out John. So notice where the wingers are. They're staying as wide as possible. You can see the distance. They're sitting on the outside of the players. So the channel where we call a half space is actually this space here, right? So this is the space uh, we typically identify as a half space, right? So, okay, so John Stones, we can notice now Bernardo has gone extremely wide and you will see the other winger going extremely wide too. So in this tactic, primarily we've got one creator, two creator, three creators. Wow, poor Erling Haaland. All right, so we got Walker coming in. You can see now he's gone to hug the line. He comes in because this is a natural thing to do. He's going to stay wider relative to the other players, but he's not going to be so wide as he's going to be sitting here. Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo gets the ball. Now, you know, he's got, comes inside. Sorry, now Bernardo, remember, he's got a strong left foot. So he plays the ball inside. Foden takes up this attacking position, which you'll see most wingers do. Because when the ball transitions into the attacking phase, the players will try and get into the box if they D2A, but he's got a trade as well, gets into the opposite. So we've got the ball now is with the fullback, our inverted wing back is in this position. You can see as this ball is being moved across the pitch, what a winger does. Look at the ball is on this side of the pitch, so he comes inside. As the ball moves this way, he's going to start moving out wider. And you notice that happening right now. The winger has gone wider. The ball goes in. He's giving us the full width. You can see both the wingers now. Full width because we are in the build-up. Now, Bernardo could go down the flank or he could come inside. He plays the ball inside. And he comes inside. And this is something that you'll probably see a winger who's got a preferred left foot doing. So you can see this is the winger role. We're doing a build-up phase at this point. Notice that he's standing outside the left back. Right? So he's staying outside, the generally staying outside the left back. And then if he does get the ball, when he does get the ball, it's not ideal. Yeah, we've got the other winger going all the way to the left lane. He's pulled that space apart. So in this kind of a setup, when you're playing like this, where you've got players giving you all the width, you really, what you really want is somebody attacking the middle because there's space. Yeah. So this idea is not ideal. I'm going to just have some fun with this. I'm going to tell him to go as an inverted wing back on the tank, no? Okay. So we've got him. Now, notice this. He's he, Remember what I said about the winger? He's, Bernardo actually has got a left foot. Right. So he's great with dribbling. What he's going to do at this point is he cuts inside. Then he's cutting inside and he plays that pass. So if you wanted a role that stays really wide and creates chances from there, instead of asking the inverter winger to stay wider with a PI, which sometimes won't even work because they're hard-coded to come back into the middle, why don't you use a winger on support duty? He will naturally stay wide and he will also put in crosses if you play him on the flank opposite his preferred foot, like how we've done with Bernardo. So now we're going to try something different. We got Foden here. Um, he's got a left foot, a reasonable right foot, um, gets into opposition area, runs with ball often. We're playing him in this position. And um, what we are going to do next is we're going to change him for this player, Angel Correa. We're going to put him here instead. He's going to be a winger. We're going to turn Bernardo Silva now into an invert inside forward. Pressing forward, AP, roaming playmaker. So now we've gone into the attacking phase. Rodrigo is just about to play the pass. Notice where the inside forward is. He's here. It's not like a winger. It's not staying out wide. But look at this winger. He's staying outside uh, the fullback. So as he plays the ball forward, he gets inside and yeah, we get a goal. So this is something that we have to bear in mind, right? So during the um, attack phase, right? This is considered the attack phase. And Rodrigo is going to play the pass. The inside forward is already sitting in an inverted position. But look at where the winger is. The winger is outside the fullback. We're going to do something radical here because this guy is going to stay wide, right? And we've got this defend duty. We know that this inside force is going to start from this channel. What I'm going to do with this role, I'm going to turn him onto an attack duty. And then I'm going to focus play to the middle. 
Okay. Now, this winger is still going to stay wide. The inverted wing back might come through this lane right now. I could make it more funky by adding an under left to the left. Then the widest player holds up the ball looking for an inside run. I find this quite cute. I find this movement quite cute. See, we got the three, the four roles here, right? The inverted wing back has just played the pass. Now we've got the uh, winger wide. Okay, he's holding his position. And we've got the inverted wing back running in because he's thinking to himself, you know, maybe I can get on the end of this one. So you see the inverted wing back is moved right into this pocket here. He's holding the uh, the width. And then we've got the other uh, inside forward in this position. And we get the winger inside forward. Actually, that was not a bad piece of movement. We're just doing this for fun. Okay, now we know that if we want uh, wing backs to go around them, we can use, we don't have to do much, right? In terms of uh, underlaps and overlaps, you can also get natural underlaps and overlaps. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to turn him into an inverter wing on support. This is going to be a slight problem because... Uh, uh, yeah, he's right foot, so he's going to come in. And then we got this player, we're going to turn him into inverter wing on support. So he's going to come inside this area. And we got these wing backs now. Okay, so we're going to play these guys as wing backs. Now, wing backs might nat should naturally overlap. Okay, so we got this player come inside. We got this player come inside. They're both looking to create chances. And then uh, we and they will invert. So this means there's natural space for these wing backs to go around them. So here we have the ball. We're working the ball up the pitch. You can see where the where they are positioned. There's a natural overlap now on this side of the pitch because the inverter winger has come inside. The wing back is, an, you know, it's easy for him to get on the flanks. So he moves down the flanks. We attack the area. He's staying in a nice uh, position, which is basically the half space. Right? It, be it becomes a threat in the area. It's just a question of whether you have the players to play this kind of football. Here we have the inverter winger. We have another example here. The inverter winger, this is what we call the build-up phase because we haven't started going to the attacking phase yet. So he's out wide. Right? And then we're still building up. We're still building up. Yeah, I know everyone's taking a long because we're playing on low tempo. We're taking our own time to build things up. So yeah, there we go. Now he starts to invert. The moment he starts to invert, he's going to come inside and then he just plays the pass. The wing back is here, but he's looking to make that creative pass into the pocket for our striker who just happens to miss the opportunity. So remember this role is an inverter winger. We've got the ball coming up. He comes inside like an inverter winger. And then pulls away, <laughs> then plays the pass from the half space to Erling Haaland. Inverted winger creates chances. So if you're in a situation where you want your player to stay wide, then you really need to look at the winger role. If you want a player to play in the half spaces, then you're looking at all those inverted roles. And if you want to ask yourself the question, why can't I get my inverted winger to stay wide? Then it's probably down to the fact that somehow or another, those guys are going to try and come inside, whether you like it or not. So I hope this video helped clear up any doubts you might have had. And I hope that the movements I showed you give you some ideas and maybe, you know, you can use them to fine tune your systems. Once again, this is the nerdiest game of football ever. Really, honestly, I don't believe you're doing videos to, to explain this stuff. I hope you had a good time. Meanwhile, you guys stay safe. Take care of each other. I'll see you again soon.